Hi there, everyone. Welcome to the Rome Floyd Chamber Small Business Spotlight, presented by Hardy Realty, and we work in cooperation with the Rome News Tribune. I am Roger Manus with Rome Business Radio. I'm Jeannie Krieger with the Rome Floyd Chamber of Commerce. Hey, Jeannie, how are you? Good. How are you doing? Good. Getting ready for the holidays. Thanksgiving breathing down our neck as we record this. Absolutely. Um, would you mind introducing our guest as we talk uh, as we talk holidays and shopping and absolutely. dining? <laughs> it's my pleasure. Um, we have joining us today Renee Webb. She is the owner of Do Good Boutique on Broad Street and one of my favorite places to shop. And we have Tanya Davis, who is on the managerial team for Aventine and Honeymoon Bakery. And she is going to um, talk to us a little bit about the restaurant and what else going on there. But Tanya also is a former uh, member of our board of directors for the chamber. So it's great to have both of these women entrepreneurs with us today. I love talking entrepreneurs. I'm surrounded by women, which is how I grew up. I had four sisters. This is great. Uh, so uh, let's just kind of uh, quick, let me start with you, Renee, at, at Do Good. Uh, just a quick overview um, about what it is you guys do and, and, and your wares there at the Do Good Boutique. All right. Thank you. Um, Do Good Boutique, we started about five years ago. Um, The idea behind the store was to carry products um, that give back and support worthy causes. So the items that we carry include ladies apparel, gifts, handbags, a few things for the men. They get a little shortchanged, Um, but just trying to provide some different um, unique gifts to the folks in Rome and um, yeah, getting ready to celebrate five years. So excited about that. Yeah. I think you said your anniversary is actually the day after Thanksgiving. We started five years ago. Yeah. On black, black Friday. So we'll have some um, gift certificates and things like that to just help celebrate surviving five years <laughs> especially this last one Con- yeah this this last year has been five years in and of it <laughs> well yeah congratulations we'll circle back around of course um Thank let's you. go over here to to tanya uh, introduced as an entrepreneur and manager at this this establishment and that establishment tell us about what all you got your hands in there tanya oh well i'm i'm lucky enough to be part of honeymoon bakery and aventine so it's been really interesting this past year because they are two totally different uh, ends of the spectrum. So Honeymoon has been open 13 years and Aventine will be open one year on Thanksgiving day this year. So, so it's been a uh, different dealing with COVID with, with those two businesses. Well, happy anniversary to you as well. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, so, well, I guess let's talk Aventine first. What, what have the challenges been? You just, you mentioned them, but COVID has been a challenge for everybody. COVID has. So with Aventine, uh, we opened on November 26th last year. We had been open, what, four months and then, and, and things were great. Rock and rolling was perfect. And then COVID hit. So, you know, we're four months into our business and had to figure out in an already struggling business, right? How, how do we make, how do we continue? Um, so that for us, we weren't to go. We were definitely reservation only at that point, you know, as a new business in town, of course. Um, but we had to figure out how to make curbside pickup part of our fine dining experience. And that's, that's what we did. Yeah. I was going to say, because you guys are uh, designed to be a sit down with, with a rich experience, which, how would you kind of describe it? Is it uh, Southern hospitality with a little Italian flavor? Is that kind of what we're look, shooting for? Doing research. <laughs> I have. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yes. And so, Oh, we, Mr. Dillman, who opened Aventine, he kind of wanted his idea was to bring a little bit of Atlanta or big city to Rome, right? So you shouldn't have to travel so far to have a nice dinner, to feel like you've gone far, but you're really in your backyard kind of thing. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, we have, I think part of our struggle, especially now, though, is people saw us as more fine dining, high end, only anniversaries or date night kind of thing. And not just, you know, it's Wednesday night, let's go to dinner. Um, but that's one good thing that came from COVID and being able to, to have the to-go orders is that people, I think, realize now you can come get, you know, a, a $20 meal on a, you know, on a, on a Wednesday night and leave. So, you know, Roger, one of the interesting things overcome that some, but it was a challenge. Um, Roger, one of the interesting things with my dining experience at Aventine, 
um, is my family of four down in there. And my husband got a pizza and my son got, you know, the steak medallions and my sister and I had the pork tenderloin. So there is something for everybody there. And I tell you, um, their curbside pickup is just so easy to do. And it, it's really been um, just a great way to eat healthy, you know, during the the COVID time, which is, is super important. And I will say, and Tanya can speak to this in a minute, just where they are in the River District and people catching on to that vision of all those businesses is exciting. So there's a lot of buzz around Aventine for sure. Yeah, we had mentioned that, you know, Renee is on, on Broad Street uh, with her Do Good Boutique, but uh, you guys are tucked back in there, the restaurants, but kind of back behind Barron Stadium. Is that on 3rd? Um I get my street I get my street numbers and names mixed yeah, up. <laughs> third and fourth. So we're at the corner there. So our, our address is four oh one East Fourth, but um we're on the corner of third also. So right beside Barron. You're yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. If if you know yeah. where Barron Stadium is, you know where you can go get a good meal and, and so curbside has been a curbside's been a major adjustment. How has how has that um, how difficult was that to kind of change your business model so quickly after having launched? It was really hard actually. So our our chefs at the time, you know, it feels like, like Renee said, it's been five years in these last few months, you know, so it feels like forever ago. Um, but I remember them saying, wow, now, like this, this to go stuff is way harder than in-person dining. <laughs> Just becoming a completely to go restaurant is totally different than, than in, you know, in-person dining. So uh, it was, it was hard, but we adjusted. And, and I think that we've got a great team. Um, and we have great support from the community. And I think that our location also does help. Like you said, um, b- bringing something new to this area, Fifth Avenue, uh, I, we've got, um, oh gosh, Cabels, is that the name? So yes. all of the, thank you, Jeannie. Uh, just, there's been a lot of new businesses coming around here too. So the excitement in this area uh, has helped tremendously as well. But curbside was difficult. And it still is difficult, honestly, but we're grateful for it. Renee, what adjustments have you specifically had to make? I mean, have you had to change your hours or your days open or anything like that? Um, once I opened back up, we, I was pretty much closed March and April. Um, hours were shortened. Um, I do a lot more calling of um, customers if something comes in instead of waiting for them to come in and, and see something I'll go, oh, something came in that looks like you um, do special orders for people um, getting ready to launch a website. That, that too, has seemed like five years in the, in the making, but um, I'm getting ready to launch that, I hope, this weekend as well. So just really reaching out um, to people and trying to find out what it is that they need and want launching a new website you you have a web presence right now don't you you're just you're um more social media but this this will be a website more for ordering and um e-commerce i got you what was the um what was the inspiration to to launch do good well actually um my original business partner and i allison waters and i started um do good and we did this kind of in conjunction with our church we both go to rome first methodist downtown and we um wanted to um have a coffee shop type location and a retail um space and both were just going to be non-traditional introductions to christianity um, we probably started looking into this now almost seven years ago. Broad Street was really just starting to boom and um, all of the renovation that was taking place. It took a long time to try and find a location. So um, we decided to kind of break the coffee shop and the retail space apart. Um, Robert Brown, who is our Pastor, he said, we have a space um, on church property that to use to get started. So it was kind of our incubator. Neither Allison nor I had any experience in um, retail. So we said, let's um, let's give it a go. And um, we were there for about a year and a half. And really want to give this a go. We need to 
be on Broad Street or somewhere where there's more visibility and walk-in traffic. So that's when we moved to the Griffin Building at 215 Broad Street. John Wesley would be proud. (laughs) As I recall, it's something like make all you can, save all you can, but give all you can. Something. something like that. I, I wish that I could um, could respite, recite it, but yes, uh, yes. Do good. good. Do good, do good, which is do also, uh, I think, according to, that's an Ecclesiastes verse. So just the Christian theme is is woven yes. throughout your business model. Yeah. Uh, where do you? And, get- and I have to say, when customers come in, um, the greatest compliment that, that they can give is they feel a sense of peace when they walk in here. I think some people come in here for therapy. They share joys and concerns and whatever. So that's a gratifying part of it as well. Wow. Good for you. Where do you get your, where do you get your uh, wares? Anywhere and everywhere. Um, We go to the um, Atlanta, the Mart in Atlanta and get a lot of things. But now with the different websites, um, there are just tremendous um, resources out there to find um, products that give back or support worthy causes and, and not everything in here um, falls within that, that box, but um, that's certainly what I try to find. And Tanya over at Aventine restaurant, um, where do you, where does your food come from to take, take the dining experience to that next level? Well, it was very important to Mr. Dillman and both of our chefs, our executive chef, um, Adam O'Hara, and our pastry chef, um, Megan Ware. It was to all three of them that we locally source as much as possible. So, like, for instance, you'll see a Tucker Farms salad. Well, Tucker Farms is a local. um, Oh, gosh, I just lost the word. Um, But then we have, like, Berry College beef. We have the Berry brisket. You know, so the Bella Vita mushrooms from Bella Vita locally. So we just – we. It's very important to them that we try to source as much as we can locally, um, give back to the community that's given so much, not to Honeymoon originally and now to us as well. And um, and so if you know of any great local farmers or anything like that that might be interested in showing their wares to us, let us know. Um, we'd be happy to meet with them, too. Seriously, we, we'd love to support that. So. Wow. Uh, Jeannie, that's speaking your language, local helping right. local. <laughs> Absolutely, it is. And I have to tell you, um, The experience that people have at Aventine and Honeymoon Bakery over the years, we have so many folks tell us, we come to Rome just so we can go to Honeymoon Bakery or, you know, they love that experience. And as Renee alluded to, you know, the vibrant downtown and now going into that river district is hugely important. It's, it's, you know, one of our top assets for Roman Floyd County. And this is how we draw people in and we tell our story. And at the same time, we have such a loyal following here. And so I love, I say this over and over again, but I love the folks that, you know, the fact that Renee says, and I call people and I tell them, you know, this might be a great item for you. I love that because that's um, kind of how we try to take care of each other, right? And so with what what Aventine's doing with their vision of, you know, helping people out locally, that's what it's all about. And that's really part of our messaging at the chamber and, you know, getting folks to shop locally and shop in Rome and Floyd County, it makes a huge difference. It, it absolutely does. And it sustains jobs and it helps these businesses grow and they're able to do more. So, you know, that's, that's the beautiful part of it when you catch on to that vision. And, and that's what the chamber really wants to push out, especially this week. And, and for the, throughout the holiday season is how important shopping Rome and shopping in Floyd County is. Well, it is interesting also what, what Renee does to me is so personal and so unique. I get creeped out when I surf for something and then I see an ad, you know, that's like Google's watching you, <laughs> Facebook is oh. watching you, or sometimes you might talk about something and you wonder, is your phone listening to you? <laughs> and then an ad pops up and I'm like, okay, that's a little too big brother. But Renee knows you, Renee thinks you might like this. Renee gives you a call. That's better. <laughs> Yes. I'm not creeping on you though. (laughs) Well, yeah, that's what she's not, she's not seeing what your web history. She knows you. (laughs) 
right. so so I know you t- you touched on that briefly, but how important it is is the holiday season here for everybody to for folks to uh, you know the pandemic is still out there and we're worried about spikes here and there and everybody's being cautious and careful. But uh, we need a holiday surge here of of people coming to shop and dine. Do we not, uh, Tanya? Yeah, you know, for us, it's. I have to choose my words carefully here. So, <laughs> well, because because if we're being honest, right? So, restaurants have um, people are really torn on whether you should go out to eat or not. It seems, you know, um, does dining spread the pandemic and all these things? Well. I know that a lot of our, our local brothers and sisters, right, in the restaurant industry here in Aventine, so we're doing everything that we can, right? We're all wearing masks. We're changing gloves religiously. So much money in sanitizers, um, new procedures to paper menus, just every single thing, seating, every other table, trying to monitor, I mean, everything. It's so much that goes into it. But the important part, of the, the other important part of this we're staying in business for our employees, obviously, and for us, but people bond over food, right? So think about like family dinners or, or coffee breaks or, or whatever, you know, I mean, tables of food or desserts, whatever, people bond that way. So that's important. And I think especially at the holidays going into it, we've had such craziness this whole year. Every year seems to be a little crazy, right? And everyone looks forward to the holidays at the end of the year you get together with your family and Jeannie, we were talking earlier, whether that's five family members or two family members, you know, you're, you're still with your family. So the fact that people want to come here, if they're every other table, who cares if we're wearing masks, who cares? The fact is we're all together. Right. And so we may be smaller, but we're still together. So that that's, what's important to us this holiday season is we want to be here. It's going to look different. Of course, it looks different at the bakery, but we still want to give people a place to be, where they can bond over food and make memories. So that's cheesy, but it's true. <laughs> so. Absolutely. It's yeah. not cheesy. Uh, part of part of what we've lost through the pandemic that is of concern, uh, in addition to the disease itself, is the is the social connectivity, the face to faces and the bonding and and yeah, that happens while breaking bread. Absolutely. Um, Renee, how has how has your foot traffic been? Um, fortunately, it is um, picking up, and it's interesting to me the number of people who say from Paulding County, Cobb County, they say we would rather come up here um, and shop than go to malls and larger places. So I'm seeing a great um, increase in foot traffic and um, just people kind of trying different things, different areas to um, look for merchandise. Well, and, and Jeannie, you mentioned, you touched on this earlier and I wanted to circle back around, you know, Broad Street's always been Broad Street and it's, you know, when it's thriving, it's great, but there's been a push uh, in the area where Aventine is located for, to, to develop and do more things, correct? That's, that's correct. There's a plan in place and um, to extend out and have a river district, kind of an arts and entertainment district. And we're really excited about that. Rome's def, Rome and Floyd County are definitely large enough to support, you know, added businesses. And it just adds to the attractiveness of uh, the downtown experience. So, you know, as you're shopping, you go dine and um, then you may go to an entertainment place of your choice and there you know are quite a few now and so there's also um, art offerings through multiple places whether that be um, canvas art or whether that's live entertainment through you know a play or a performance so it really is um, expanding the experience of people you know visiting Rome and being able to have a full few days even of activities and just enjoyment. Well, and one of the things for anybody who may be listening out on the World Wide Web outside of uh, the Northwest Georgia area that may not be familiar with Rome is, you know, uh, Google us, (laughs) take a look around. I mean, you could, if you can, you know, you, you park your car in one spot and, you know, within a few blocks, you can experience so much. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. It is, 
tremendous when I travel wherever, and I'm sure all of you experience the same thing. People start talking to me about their favorite places to dine or shop in Rome and Fleet County. And I'm like, yes. And, you know, we're just thrilled to have you. And so, you know, we want to promote Rome even more going forward. And that will be one of the chamber's top goals um, for 2021 in drawing people here, people as visitors and people to take on the great jobs that we have here also. Yeah. Um, I think we can, I think everybody's looking at January 1, 2021 as the great opportunity to turn the page. <laughs> right. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Uh, I don't think pandemics go away without vaccines, but we could certainly, uh, we've, we've, we've muddled our way through it. We're learning how to survive with it. So, uh, and business is returning, which is great. Um, uh, Tanya, in addition to maybe word of mouth uh, about your great food, what other types of marketing do you guys do? Is it, is it social media, things like that? Yeah, we have a tremendous social media following, um, very interactive social media following. Uh, I think that a lot of that had to do with the fact that we told our story. Jeannie's, uh, the chamber's great at this. Do Good is great at this. Most local small businesses figured this out, right? So people want to buy into a story. They want more than just you selling them something. Uh, so we did that with Aventine from the very beginning. Um, they, it was an old rundown building. And if you go to any of our social media from the very beginning, you know, it follows the, the, the build out of that. And, and so people felt like they were part of this growth too. Um, and so now they feel invested, you know, uh, I think that that's helped a lot, but yeah, so we, we have a website about our social media. I think right now is probably, probably our best marketing. Well, plus your your story is unique uh, in that you you saw a little bit of a niche of what you wanted to provide the customer that you know maybe Rome didn't have, so you're also filling a need. Yeah, that would be Kevin Dillman. Let me just say, <laughs> <laughs> I, he had the vision. I just helped make it happen. But <laughs> it's, it's teamwork, right? Teamwork makes the dream work. <laughs> wow, you should you should make a bumper sticker. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure they're out there. It might be too good. <laughs> yeah, it might, might be, we can get one for you. <laughs> Thank yeah. you, Renee. Call me. <laughs> um, and and Renee, uh, in addition to uh, just you know getting your impetus being launched, kind of in partnership with first you met first first Methodist Church. You know, you mentioned you got a website coming. Are you on social media? Do you guys do any like newspaper advertising? How do you get the word out about what you do? We really don't do much. Um, newspaper advertising, but um, a few months back, I asked Allie Freeman if she would um, help me with social media, and she has done that and done a a great, great job. So um, I'm kind of solo here right now, so I I didn't have the time to to devote, nor would I be good at it. So um, I got Allie to help me out, and she's doing um, a great job with that. So, um, pretty much just Instagram and Facebook is what I use. Well, social media, social media has changed the world over the last 10 years, hasn't it? It really has. <laughs> with, it with, really has. with how everybody does their marketing. Um, yes. G- Jeannie, um, I know you had talked about, we, we, we touched on this briefly at the top of the show, but, uh, let's just sing the praises of women here in business. Uh- Absolutely. They're, they're making it happen. And um, they're not only um, doing great jobs, they're great leaders in the community. And I think that the relationships that they've built and how they truly invest in this community outside of even their businesses um, speak so well of both of them. So it really is tremendous. And, you know, this is what our community, Roman Floyd County is all about. And that's, you know, I know that, um, Everybody wants to lend a helping hand. And so, again, one of those ways is to to shop in Roman Floyd County. And, you know, that's part of why there is a Small Business Saturday. And that's um, always the Saturday after Thanksgiving. And it really is um, to bring focus. You know, American Express started the campaign, but it is to bring focus to small businesses during this holiday shopping season. And so um, right now in our parking lot, we have set up where people can come by and pick up kind of the bags and swag that promotes um, shopping small and small business Saturday. And we just want to push that message out to remind people to spend their dollars where they count. And it's right here in this community. So um, these are two great examples of um, 
why business in Roman Floyd County matters. And just two great leaders who have really um, dug down deep in the community and are given so much back. Well said. Tanya, what is your background? Um, bookkeeping, business consulting. So, uh, <laughs> and you stumbled your way into bakeries and restaurants. Well, <laughs> the bakery was one of our um, bookkeeping clients when I had a bookkeeping company, and then I just had that and going to work for them full time, and so, and then I inherited Aventine. <laughs> yes. uh, Renee, what is your background business wise? Um, all over the place. Um, I have a master's in marketing, never um, specifically used that, but um, banking, healthcare, um, retail. <laughs> it just goes to show you a lot of career paths are not straight lines. <laughs> Are any career path straight lines? <laughs> no. And it's, you know what, Roger, what's great about both of their stories is they're bringing that experience to what they're doing today. And so um, wherever they've been, whatever they've done, they use that every single day in doing what they do so well. I have a master's degree in family counseling, Jeannie, and we counsel every day, literally. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) I was thinking about how therapeutic it is. Renee had said people show up to talk and have, you know, just to stores. And I think, you know, we, we talk about retail therapy, but there's all, and what you said, Tanya, spot on, you know, having dinner together over with with friends or family, that's very therapeutic. And that's so important. During this time where we've been isolated, it's important we get back and start having those conversations again. So hopefully sooner versus later. Hopefully. From your mouth to God's ears. Uh, Renee, what is, uh, let's just uh, wrap things up here. Contact information, website, how can people come shop, the street address, things like that. Okay. Do Good Boutique. It's 215 Broad Street um, on Instagram, Do Good Boutique, Facebook, <laughs> Do Good Boutique. Um, 706-237-7771 is the phone number. Um, and a new, just, web, a new website coming this weekend. A new website coming up. Yeah. Coming, coming soon. <laughs> okay. Yes. Well, uh, appreciate it. <laughs> My husband would laugh. He's like, that, that's all you've been saying. It's coming soon. <laughs> It's out there in the public, so uh, I, I've got to make it happen. <laughs> okay. Uh, and uh, Tanya, um, information and things like that for curbside pickup or dining in and menus. and. <laughs> so, which, like Renee said, pretty consistent. It's Aventine Rome on Instagram, Aventine Rome on Facebook, AventineRome.com. If you're looking for the website, the menus are always there. Uh, we're on Travelocity, Yelp, Google, um, bakery is through DoorDash. So if you just go to the internet and just Google Aventine Rome, <laughs> it'll come up. Not Rome, Italy. That, it will bring that up too. But <laughs> oh, well, that, well, that was another thing. We, we didn't touch on this, but obviously Aventine, that's a that's a tip of the cap to the sister city and the, the hills of Rome. And <laughs> Yeah, it's one of the seven hills of, of Rome, right? And locally too. So. I, I, I think, you know, I, I think I know two or three of them. I should know all yeah. seven. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jeannie, do you know all seven? I don't. <laughs> but I'm just does the does the levee count as a hill? No. <laughs> it should. Clock tower. Hill. <laughs> I don't, yeah, clock tower. That is a hill. <laughs> Myrtle, Myrtle the Hill. Oh, I'm embarrassing myself now. Uh, Jeannie, yeah. Jeannie, any final thoughts? Yeah. Shop, so, shop, shop um, Rome. Super- Absolutely. And for those that are listening, you know, you can buy gift certificates from both of these businesses just by picking up the phone and calling and they'll work that out with you. And um, again, I just can't say how important it is to for this season to, to shop Roman Shop Floyd County and call on us to the chamber if you need any phone numbers or information. Our um, website is RomeGA.com, and um, you can call 706-291-7663 to speak to someone at the chamber. Fantastic. Ladies, thank you so much. That is uh, Renee Webb with Do Good Boutique and Tanya Davis with Aventine and Honeymoon. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Um, Jeannie, as always, it's been a pleasure. Thank you, Roger. Enjoyed it. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. 
Thank you. Thank you as well. Thank you, guys. You've been listening to the Rome Floyd Chamber Small Business Spotlight on Rome Business Radio, brought to you by Hardy Realty, and we work in cooperation with the Rome News Tribune. Thanks for listening.